Hey church, welcome back to HD Online. Thank you for joining us on our midweek service as we go through the parables. If you could please turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 9, we'll be covering the parable of the sower. This is a story about planting seed. Another time Jesus began teaching by the lake, a great crowd gathered around him. So he got into a boat and went out on the lake. All the people stayed on the shore close to the water. Jesus used many stories to teach them. He said, Listen, a farmer went out to plant seed. While the farmer was planting, some seed fell on the road. The birds came and ate all the seed. Some seed fell on rocky ground where there wasn't much dirt. The seed grew very fast because the ground was not deep. But when the sun rose, the plants withered. The plants died because they did not have deep roots. Some other seed fell among thorny weeds. The weeds grew and choked the good plants. So those plants did not make grain. Some other seed fell on good ground. and the good ground, the seed began to grow. It grew and made a crop of grain. Some plants made 30 times more grain, some 60 times more grain, and some 100 times more grain. And Jesus said, let those with ears use them and listen. Now, as I was reading these parables and reading the scripture, uh, the story that came to mind for me was my sister-in-law, uh, Jamie Galvin, my brother's wife. She has a, a garden, a fairly big garden, and when she first started uh, planting her, her garden, getting everything set up, she started off with a 6x12 box, and she started to turn the dirt and get everything in preparation to start making her garden the way she wanted it to be. Now. I'm by all means not a gardener at all, I'm not a farmer, I don't know any of this, so I was picking her brain trying to figure this out and she was telling me that she would have to wake up every morning, uh, depending on the time, before sunrise to water her plants, uh, to prep the soil and to get everything in line so that way she can start her harvest. And I began to ask her, okay well when the soil is already prepped and you planted your seed and you prepped everything, did everything grow or did some not take? Um, how did it work? And she said that she planted accordingly to her instructions of how she wanted to, to plant her garden and some of the soil took the seeds and she had some plants that sprouted and there was others where she had to replant and nothing sprouted from it at all. And so um, as I began to read the scripture and, and understand uh, what God is revealing to us. I look at, I look at our lives and and the way He's speaking to us, and especially through the Scripture. Um, some seed you see that fell on the ground, some seed uh, fell on on thorns, and some fell on good ground and good soil that produced really good fruit. And that brings me to my first point: is to be still and listen. Um, when we are looking to to be fed the word and to understand the character of who Jesus is, to understand who God is. I think we get excited in reading scripture and being involved in, in a church and therefore we're quick to, to speak and quick to want to just lash out and, and say things um, maybe that we don't even um, mean or intend to do, but be still and listen is what appeared to me when I was reading the scripture. Um, by this reading your Bible, understanding what God is saying to us. That is the very first seed that God planted into, into my heart when reading um, God's Word and, and being involved and starting to serve in the church um, with small group. I know with our church we do a, a very good job of staying connected, having connect groups, prayer groups, uh, youth groups, and just many different groups that gather together to stay connected with one another, but more importantly, stay connected with one another. Uh, for the love of, of Jesus Christ and, and building our relationship with one another. Another one is conversation. And that's simply how we're doing this right now. Um, just talking with an individual, talking in groups, and um, being that, that planner, being that farmer, and putting that positive seed, that gospel seed, in, in one another's hearts so that way we can have that firm foundation and begin to grow. Our second point was be slow to speak. All right? And by this, sometimes uh, we want to be quick to, to judge others, compare our lives to other people's uh, lives and our status. And uh, this is a, a really wrong way to go about 
um, our lives and when we come to that realization that we do want to follow who Christ is and the scripture to follow both these points will be in Mark chapter 4 verses 13 through 20 then Jesus said to the followers do you understand this story if you don't then how will you understand any story the farmer is like a person who plants God's teaching in people sometimes the teaching falls on the road this is like some people they hear the teaching of God, but Satan quickly comes and takes away the teaching that was planted in them. Others are like the seed planted on rocky road. They hear the teaching and quickly accept it with joy, but they don't allow the teaching to go deep into their lives. They keep it only on short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the teaching, they quickly give up. Others are like the seed planted among the thorny weeds. They hear the teaching, but then other things come into their lives worries, the love of money, and wanting all kinds of other things. These things stop the teaching from growing. So that teaching does not produce fruit in their lives. Others are like the seed planted in the good ground. They hear the teaching and accept it. Then they grow and produce fruit, sometimes 30 times more, sometimes 60 times more, sometimes 100 times more. So as you can see, what I like about this parable here is um, Jesus is talking to the people and he's explaining to them like, hey, there's this farmer planting seed and he's going around. And what I like about this, um, and it goes along with my sister-in-law Jamie's story, is it, they didn't, he didn't say the farmer came over here and prepped the ground and, and got the soil ready. The farmer just went and grabbed the seed and started just pouring it along the way in hopes that it's going to catch and, and begin to grow. And therefore, that's that farmer there, that that planter, um, setting that harvest. That's that's God. That's Jesus. And we're that soil. Now, we all want that good ground, but it's up to us to receive and be receptive to God's word and and wanting to grow. And what I like about this too is Jesus is teaching his disciples and talking to people, and he goes along and not only tells a story about this and. But he also goes over and shows some accountability in here. He's saying, hey, here's some, here's some seed, which is a word of God that's being planted over here on the road. And it sprouted way too early. There's no roots. And so therefore, the plant began to grow, but there's no foundation. So it ended up dying. And some of us with our faith, we're, we're that way as well, where we get involved in church. We get involved in, in wanting to, to love God and, and have our faith. But sometimes we let... The worries of the world and, and what's taking place especially in our present day take over our life and we begin to pull back or begin to live our life in fear instead of looking at the at the foundation of our life which is and should be jesus christ with point number two would be slow to speak we see here um with the seed that had fell on on thorns now the sun came up and uh the, the plant started to grow and though it sprouted just like it just like the seed did in the road there was no roots so therefore they withered away and Jesus begins to speak on this too like there are people who have faith and they get involved in the church and they're all for it but when trials and tribulations hit their way they're quickly to to give up and quit and by be slow to speak in point number two what we can do is when trials and tribulations do hit our way when we have the worries of the world hitting our way, when culture's in our way, when we're trying to live our life in status, we just need to sit back and see what God says about us. And as that word and that seed is being fed to us, have that firm foundation. That firm foundation is being established in Jesus Christ and who He's calling us to be. He's not telling us to, to do anything. He's not telling us to go out and, and be that farmer just yet. He's telling us to be receptive, to receive, to understand. And once we understand, engaging. And once we engage, then we can later go on and be that farmer and start planting seed in, in other farms, which is talking and reaching out to other people. My third point is to be rooted. And by be rooted, I mean to be rooted in the church and, and serving. Allow the fruits of the Spirit to be rooted in you. Um, these past few months, my wife and I have been showing our son and teaching our son how to swim. And the only time he wants to have fun and be swimming is when he has floaties on. And he thinks having floaties on, he's going to learn. And yes, we all know 
that when a kid has floaties or toys, they're having fun in the pool, it's all a good time. But there's not really any learning going on when you have floaties on. It's a, it's a safety net. So therefore my wife, I'm like, okay, you've had your fun, you had your floaties on, now it's time to take them off. So we take the floaties off him and here he goes. He's like, okay, I'm gonna jump in. So he goes and he jumps in the pool and once he pops up, man, he is so surprised and up and looking up in the in the air and gasping for air and he's splashing and swimming every which way. And my wife and I are right there to, to hold him and catch him. We're like, hey, everything's okay, breathe, relax. And he is clinged onto me, won't let go whatsoever. And I'm like, buddy, it's okay, let go. Start paddling your feet, get on your stomach, hold your breath. Anytime you feel yourself sinking, come up to the surface, catch your breath again, but you gotta keep your arms and your legs moving, stay on your belly. And for a while, he had a very hard time just believing my wife and I and not wanting to swim, not wanting to give it a try. He just kept saying, give me the floaties, dad, give me the floaties, mom. We're like, no, we're sorry, you gotta, you need to learn. Okay, you need to learn. You're not always gonna have floaties. If you were to fall into the pool or you fall in, in the lake or the ocean, um, you're not gonna have floaties. No one's gonna say, oh, here's a pair of floaties. You need to learn and understand. And so therefore my wife and I are, are training him and, and pushing him and just teaching him how to um, just trust us and believe us in, in swimming. And the past few weeks, he, you see progress in him. He no longer enters the pool anymore with floaties. He's in the pool, kicking, moving his arms. And what I like about this too is we, as parents, you give your, your kids rewards for what they do. And so he, whatever reason, he puts the goggles on and, and he feels like he can just go, which I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm good with that. Let's put the goggles on, let's, let's get him moving. That way he has the confidence. So he has the goggles on, so now he's going underwater, holding his breath and he's starting to move. Uh, just the other day, my wife and him are, are in the pool and he starts swimming and he probably swims about 15 feet. No floaties, holding his breath, doing the techniques that my wife and I are teaching him and just trusting us that we're not going to let him fail, and which is true. We're in there. We're going to push him to the limits. We're going to motivate him and when he feels like he is going to give up and we're there to push him even a little bit further that way he can go a little bit further and then later we, we reward him with with goggles and, and ice cream for his accomplishments and Jesus is doing the same thing with us here in the scripture as well he's giving us those, those tools that we need to to be established but he's looking for that firm foundation All right, what that firm foundation is us believing and, and receiving and understanding and being able to grasp what he's revealing to us through the word of God and then applying that to others. Our last scripture in Mark 4 26 is Jesus uses a story about seed and Jesus said the kingdom of God is like a man who plants seed in the ground. The seed comes up and grows night and day. It doesn't matter whether the man is asleep or awake. The seed still grows. The man does not know how it grows without any help the earth produces grain first the plant grows then the head and then all the grain in the head when the grain is ready the man cuts it this is the harvest time so this is jesus talking about our maturity when, once we do understand the word of god and we understand the gospel so right here he said the seed comes up and grows night and day it doesn't matter where the man is asleep or awake the seed still grows. So once that seed is planting, once the Word of God, once we see that and understand it, and we're starting to be receptive to that, we're not there babysitting or, or watching or, or seeing the, the growth of it. It all starts within us. And that's what the Gospel does to us. As we receive the Gospel, we begin to understand, to mature, and start to grow. Once we understand and start to, to grow in the Gospel, then we can start being that farmer and start planting that seed in, in people, our family, our friends, and our small groups, and, and our church, with our coworkers, anyone who we can engage with. And what I like about this is this goes with how we approach our, our life and with our family and, and our friends. Um, if you're asking, well, how do I go about just being rooted and wanting to serve in the church or wanting to have faith or wanting to follow who Jesus is 
you can start with yourself and if you're married and you have a spouse and you have kids you start with your family that's your very first ministry right there your very first seed that you'll be planting is in your family just real quick one more story about my family is my son once he started to learn and understand how to pray this kid he loves praying for breakfast lunch and dinner before we go to bed at night and actually i take that back he talks to my to myself he's dad can you please pray at night so very well i'll pray for us all at night but when he prays for breakfast lunch or dinner he it's not only for the food it's for everything all around life and it's funny because sometimes i look over at him and we're having dinner or maybe we're having uh, like family dinners and everyone's like kind of poking their eye at him like looking at him like all right bud like it's not about the food anymore and as a father i you know i find it funny but i also look at it like that's the seed that my wife are, and i are planting in him and he sees that not just my wife and i but that's the love of god that's the grace of god being planted in him and he's starting to apply that to whoever he engages with he's such a sweet little boy and for him to pray and to have that childlike faith that's all god's asking have have faith like a child and implement that faith and what i enjoy about that i've never as as his father um told him like hey son cut it short come on let's go we gotta eat no the food's gonna be there our appetite's gonna be there you continue when you're done you're done and those are the those are the roots that have been instilled in myself and my wife that we apply and that we have applied into to our son and from the scripture i know that's what jesus is implanting in us and want us to do the same with our families but more importantly out into this world so our last point Point number three, be rooted and serve. What we want to do here is, is be just more and more like Jesus once we are once we have that firm foundation. The way we could go about doing that is applying the fruits of the Spirit to our life. And those those characteristics are love, peace, faithfulness, joy, goodness, gentleness, patience, self-control, and kindness. Um, all these things that I just went over are, are all all good things. And if you just think about if my life mimic those fruits of the spirits how how would that look how would my life look how would our family and their life look how would people around me if they acted the same way how would that look and that's what jesus is doing right here in this parable in the parable of the sower they're planting this fruit. he's planting that seed he's planting those characteristics into our life that way we can apply them to others church i hope this message helped you let's prepare our hearts to give in Hebrews 11, chapter 3, it says, It is by faith we understand that the whole world was made by God's command. This means that what we see was made by something that cannot be seen. And this ministered to me a lot as far as giving and reminded me of what Pastor Eric said a few weeks ago, that it is very difficult for us to, to give sometimes because we give in the natural. And the gospel of God, Jesus, is all supernatural. So therefore, we need to prepare ourselves and humble ourselves and, and think about how generous Jesus is and how he was to go to the cross, to die for our sins. And the least we can do is mimic that by being generous and, and wanting to give, but not in the natural. Actually think about what they're saying right here in the scripture. It is by faith we understand that the whole world was made by God's command. This means that what we see was made by something that cannot be seen. That is through faith. Church, I'm, I'm just gonna tell on myself, I had a very terrible time and difficult time giving. Um, I'm just telling on myself, I did not start to give faithfully and consistently until 2019. And the reason why I say this humbly and, and boasting in it is not because look at me because I give, no, because once I started to give, and stopped thinking in my natural state of mind and started thinking faithfully, supernaturally, just many things started to fall into place. Got a job, got married to a beautiful wife, and many things just started to take place. And I did not give for these things to happen. I just gave because the gospel got a hold of my heart. And therefore, I just wanted to be part of that. Whether any of those things took place in my life wasn't important. I was going to give no matter what because God has saved my life and... I was making them the Lord and Savior of my life. So I pray that you can prepare your hearts and be generous 
and allow this scripture to minister to you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for the time that we have together to gather and, and just share your word, Father. We pray that this stirs into our heart, Father, and it is intertwined together in our heart and mind that we could give faithfully and honor you, Lord. We pray and thank you for your mercy upon our life, Father. Amen.